Hi guys! This time I wanna discuss um, stroke. Remember last time I I discussed on hypertension, uh, the management for stroke, hypertension, or high blood pressure and diabetes. They're all the same. So uh, I think it's wise to teach um, on these topics all together. Uh, by the way, there's one question asking about diabetes, like what is better? Is it better to use pills? or insulin shots and the answer is it depends because there are type 2 diabetes the body um, is producing insulin it's just that the peripheral tissue you know the muscles the liver and the fat are not allowing uh, insulin to enter the cells we call it insulin resistance so we give pills but I've seen a lot of patients on type 2 diabetes that eventually needs um, insulin why is that? Because if the cells are not using insulin, it sends a signal to our brain um, telling the pancreas to produce more insulin, even if there's insulin in the system, because it's not being used by the body. So eventually, this will wear out our pancreas. That's why at, uh, in the long run, uh, type 2 diabetes end up uh, using um, insulin shots as well. Also, be, be careful of your diet if you already have diabetes because uh, even if you're taking insulin and pills, if you are not careful with your diet, then every time your blood sugar is elevated after a heavy meal with triple cheeseburger and mac and cheese and all the fries, then again, it sends a signal to the pancreas to produce more insulin, creating a heavy demand and stress to your pancreas. So uh, again, the answer is it depends. If your blood sugar is uh, way wild and uncontrollable, um, we can combine both uh, insulin and uh, pills. And pills mainly are given to um, either increase the secretion of insulin from the pancreas or like example of this is your glibicide or glucotrol or uh, if you heard of metformin, it's a very famous anti-diabetic pills. Its uh, effect is again to increase uh, sensitivity of the tissues to insulin so the cells open and welcome the glucose inside the cells or uh, it decreases the production of uh, glucose from your liver. We call it gluconeogenesis. So there's tons of pills out there to either uh, increase the sensitivity of the cells to insulin or just uh, decrease the conversion of your carbohydrate, your complex sugar into simple sugar, call it alpha glucosidase inhibitor in our intestines. So now I'm going to talk about stroke. Stroke is very personal to me because I've known close friends, two um, amazing um, co-worker that one died of uh, brain aneurysm and recently uh, an amazing, amazing mentor um, suffered from uh, a massive brain stroke and now is not able to talk. We call it aphasia. The, the, she lost the ability to communicate. So um, she doesn't talk. That's the expressive aphasia. I'm not sure if she's also able to comprehend um, speech. That's receptive aphasia. So we don't um, take a stroke lightly because it can cost us our life. And if we survive, the quality of our life. Okay, the brain is... It's like the, the master of everything. So if you lost this ability of cognition, memory, um, comprehension, speech, motors, movement, everything, it's almost like we, we lost this quality of life that God has intended for us to, to enjoy. So stroke is like a, a heart attack for the heart. That's why another name for that is brain attack. So just like heart attack, the blood vessel that supplies a certain area of the brain becomes blocked with blood clot. The blood clot could be coming from the same vessel that supplies the that area of the brain or it could be from somewhere else. It's a clot from other parts of the body that accidentally lodge into our brain. One cause of this is atrial fibrillation. It's an abnormal uh, beating or heartbeat or rhythm of the heart that causes blood to thicken inside our heart, forming a clot. And then when this clot travels, then it lodges in one of the vessels of the brain. Maybe you have relatives or loved ones 
uh, who has atrial fibrillation or AFib, and they are on Coumadin or a blood thinner or Sorelto or Iliquis. So these are blood thinners that make sure that their blood are not thick to create a stroke. So and there are two types of stroke. One is ischemic. This is the one that is like a heart attack. That's, that's the one that I mentioned. There is a clot in the brain and you know that oxygen and uh, glucose is the main uh, bread and butter of the brain. And this is delivered through the circulation. So when the circulation is stopped, then um, the brain cells eventually will die because number one, no oxygen. Number two, uh, no glucose. So that's ischemic stroke. Number two is the um, hemorrhagic stroke. This is the one that because of a very high blood pressure, your uh, blood vessel burst. And so there is a blood seeping uh, through the blood vessel walls into the brain cells. And you know that the blood is acidic. It's an irritant. So it will also cause the death of your brain cell. And also number two is um, it increases intracranial pressure. You see our brain is uh, enclosed in a skull. This is thick and it is only designed by the Lord to, to sustain certain amount of pressure. So if there is an, in, an increase in uh, the amount of blood in the brain, then it kind of, uh, we call it herniation. It causes the brain to shift and, and to one side because of the increasing pressure and that could also cause uh, numbness and, and coma, coma sometimes. Patient becomes comatose or, or obtended that causes them to, to go to the ICU. So ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke, those are two types of um, stroke. What are the risk factors? Why is it that um, people develop stroke? Um, we have the non-modifiable factors. Number one is um, age. The older you are, the more prone you are to developing stroke. And especially if you have a family history of, of stroke. Uh, number two is uncontrolled hypertension. If your blood pressure is cons consistently 140 over 90 and you haven't really consulted your doctor and take medication that will somehow control your blood pressure, at least one below 130 over 80, especially if you are diabetic, then you are prone to hypertension. Uh, people who have had a heart attack before or uncontrolled diabetes are also um, prone to a stroke. People that are smoking, that are drinking um, alcohol, and those who are using um, drugs like amphetamine and cocaine because they are vasoconstrictor are also prone to developing stroke. Also high cholesterol, greater than 200, high triglyceride, can create again a plug in the blood vessels that if the blood vessels are 100% occluded, then uh, it can also cause a heart attack. There is a major vessel here on the side of our neck. Those are called um, carotid arteries. If there's a stenosis, then um, you are, a stenosis is like a, a narrowing um, of the arteries as a result again of block formation or, or blood clots. It restricts the circulation of blood into the brain. So those are the causes. So you can really see that most of the factors are modifiable. Meaning to say that we can control them. Control your blood sugar, control your blood pressure, exercise. See exercise again, those are practical tips that we can um, decrease our risk of getting stroke. Um, even diet. Again, I will go back to legumes, whole grain, low uh, fat, don't eat too much fat, especially animal fat. If you can avoid that, that it's better. If you love dairy, then almond milk is a better um, alternative because um, animal fat is a high source of saturated um, fat. Not eating fast food, if you can prepare your food, then that is better. Check your blood pressure. Always visit your doctor and make sure that your cholesterol level is within um, normal limits as well as your um, blood pressure. And exercise, exercise. Only 30 minutes a day for five days. That's all the American Heart Association is asking. Either walking, um, jogging, uh, running. If you can add uh, weight bearing exercises, that's fine uh, as well. What are the signs and symptoms that uh, you should not ignore. I'm talking about this amazing woman that has had stroke recently, 
before she had a major stroke and she manifested with um, passing out you know while at work she just passed out and then uh, lost consciousness and then there's a big blood clot on the left side of her brain and um, they have to do um, craniotomy they have to open their skulls take the, the clot out and put the skull back in if you manifest with um, like numbness or weakness of your face arm hand or, or legs um, call uh, 911 right away uh, sudden memory loss or sudden confusion speech problem like sudden slurring of speech or no words um, come out of their mouth then those are signs of stroke even sudden uh, blindness or blurriness of vision or a uh, sudden severe headache with vomiting it signifies um, stroke also a dizziness especially if coupled with a blood pressure of uh, greater than 180 over 120 call 911 right away why because the earlier you can bring the patient to the ER we call it the from the event to the door you know the window period of you know at least within two hours to two, three hours then uh, this patient can receive uh, we call it thrombolytics if uh, those are the medication that can dissolve their um, blood clot and uh, th those are really life-saving measures that our amazing doctors and nurses give in order to um, save um, our lives there are two major strokes that can either affect the left side of our brain or the right side of our brain to simplify um, I don't know if you know this but uh, the left side of our brain um, controls the functioning of the right side of our body and the left side the right side of our brain controls the left side of the body so for example that I know that has had a recent stroke she had a massive stroke of the left side of the brain and she presented with the weakness of the right side of the body and uh, speech problem she she cannot form words um, she she actually passed out and all that so very classic because the left side of our brain um, it it uh, is concerned with um, expressive language it has it has the broccus area in the prefrontal lobe of the brain that is concerned with uh, expressed speech it also has the vernix area in the temporal lobe of the brain that is concerned with how we understand concepts how we we understand um, communication uh, while the right side of the brain is the one that's concerned with cognition emotion if the right side of the brain is affected these are the one that manifest with uh, sudden memory problem or cognition problem so be mindful of that and they're the ones that manifest with left side uh, weakness of the body so be mindful of that you may be able to save your life and other uh, people's lives don't take stroke lightly because we this is something that we can prevent and uh, the sad thing is this is very prevalent a lot of people are are dying or or uh, with stroke or, or live in the nursing home for mostly the rest of their life because when the brain died the muscles you know the, the, the paralysis actually uh, lingered for life and God forbid some gets intubated became comatose and unable to wake up and so they have to live in a long-term care with tracheostomy like a hole in their neck attached to a uh, breathing machine so we don't want that to happen so again, uh, let me pray for, for you guys if you have loved ones that have uh, experienced the stroke, for example, or paralysis or, or motor problems or speech problems. Even people, they end up having a uh, tube feeding attached to the nose or in, to the stomach because um, swallowing is controlled by cranial ner nerves 9 and 10. And when we experience stroke, then it also, also um, paralyzes the swallowing uh, muscle so we don't want that to happen so uh, Lord we just I just lift up to you our brothers and sisters that are watching um, wherever they are whatever part of our state of the US they are Lord that you will just um, heal them Lord their brain um, those that uh, experience stroke Lord that you will restore the circulation on the blood vessel that's affected clean the blood vessels of every um, cholesterol cholesterol block if there's any atrial fibrillation or diabetes or hypertension 
or any addiction that um, led them to come to smoking, drug addiction, and alcohol, that they be set free right now, Lord. Because you said in your word that you came to this earth that we may have life and life abundantly. I pray that you restore our memory, you restore the cerebral cortex of the brain, the frontal lobe, that uh, we may be able, able to speak again or understand concept again, strengthen those arms and legs that are paralyzed, Lord, and, and clear the airway and uh, strengthen the, the muscles that um, control our swallowing so that um, our friends and loved ones will be able to enjoy uh, you know, normal food, the, enjoy the pleasure of eating as you designed for us to have in this uh, in our lives, Lord. And uh, also I, I speak healing over the, the heart, all the blood vessels, that they be free and patent with a, with a blood flow that's uh, flowing freely. And for those who are struggling with obesity, Lord, that they will make healthy choices. Help them to have the self-discipline to exercise and make um, choices of um, healthy food like vegetables, legumes, fruits, and whole grains. So thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate you and I just pray that you will somehow apply these practical tips in your daily life so you will see the results. In Jesus' name, amen.